Hello, Crypto Novelist, and welcome back. My name is Chris Brown, and I'm the host of the channel. And it is Sunday afternoon, and it's a beautiful day. I'm kind of casually dressed. Today, I'm going to talk about Dent. Dent has had, in the last couple of days, an amazing run upwards in price activity. Even though it's still less than a penny, I think it's really worth taking a look at in terms of what's happened in terms of price, as well as what the whole uh, token is about. So uh, I'm here on the Dent website. For those of you who, who do not know, Dent, is a, its business application has to do with mobile data. And basically what it's trying to do is it's trying to provide users of wireless data the ability to connect more easily than it can presently and for less money. So I'm going to take just a quick little time, maybe a few minutes, just to look at the Dent team kind of what it's about. And then at tail end, we're going to take a look at what has happened over the last couple of days in terms of price activity, which is pretty amazing. So with Dent, what you can get is you can get basically, a, it's a SIM card. It's a, mo it's a mobile roaming SIM card. They're presently located in about 60 countries and they're in a, a, a beta testing phase, if you will. If you take a closer look at the roadmap, you can see that Dent is still in its early developmental stages. It's having success. We'll take a closer look at in terms of how it plans to break out over time. Uh, but right now it's just really focused in the area close to what's considered Europe. Uh, let's take a look at quickly at the Dent team. Going down here to basically about Dent was start. This is the Dent team right here. And I want to really kind of focus really on what I consider just a couple of the individuals. This is the, the main founder, Taro Katajinian, if I said his name correctly. But I'd like to focus on this gentleman here, uh, Ramon Creep. Um, and if I, Greep, I said Creep, Greep. Um, and then I believe this gentleman right here, and, Andreas Valmore. So let's take a closer look at this team. And basically, Taro, he's originally from Finland. He's been around about 20 years in terms of internet startup. So you'll find that this team has a lot of expertise in this area. And as far as crypto tokens go, they're the only ones that are focused on mobile application and wireless network. No one else has chosen, chosen to jump into this space. So I think this is gonna be a very successful uh, project in the future. Maybe not in the immediate future, but definitely down the road as, as adoption occurs with the crypto space in general. But what caught my attention in terms of their team was this gentleman here, um, Andreas, who's a mobile specialist. He's been in, involved with mobile applications and building apps for the past 12 years. Uh, he's been a part of companies such as Mercedes-Benz and Audi in the European area. And so I like his expertise, you know, in terms of this space. And I think he brings a lot to the team. And then the other person that caught my attention was this gentleman here, Ramon Greep is, is, I'll correct myself. He's been involved in teleco operations for the past 20 years, um, again, in the European market um, with the last 14 years as a part of Deutsche Telekom. So I think the team, I am not going into all of everyone today. Uh, I'll do a, a deeper dive at another video, but the team has a lot of expertise in this marketplace. They've established some great partnerships. We'll take a look at this real quickly in terms of who they have partnerships with. You know, you got Samsung, you got G, GDP Mobile Security, um, you've got a Telecom Infra Project and Mobile Ecos Ecosystem Forum as partners in this space. The other thing that I really wanna take a look at has to do with their roadmap. And where they're essentially doing their launch, now I'm gonna scroll down to this map. Their focus right now is the what they're calling the European breakout. They're gonna have breakouts in the US, then Mexico, Central America, they'll do South Africa, they're gonna do Australia and Singapore. And I have, I'm not gonna get into the sequencing of what, but right now the focus is the breakout of Dent in Europe. Uh, so there's a lot, when you start looking at the telecom industry, taking a look at how large of an industry it is in terms of dollars, how many users they have, this particular business case has a lot of power. Uh, and I see, like I said, I see a lot of great things for Dent in the future. 
and hence why I'm reporting on it. So let's take a look at what has happened with Dent in the last couple of days. Dent started on August 11th at basically a little over a, a third of a penny. Uh, it's again, all of these numbers are less than a penny. So we're not talking about a lot of dollars here when you're investing in the dent at this moment in time. Uh, so, it was, so it started here at basically 0 0.0033 cents, if you will. Over from the 12th, the 13th, 14th, and 15th, basically over a four-day period of time, I was watching this climb. Dent was just simply stair-stepping up. We're on the hourly chart right now where we can better see what is happening with it. And it had a couple of what I would consider head and shoulders situations. Down here, when it first started, and I think it's better to see this on the hourly, and we're going to go to some deeper charts, deeper time frames. When it started, it shot all the way up to here to basically, it increased a thousandths. And it went to 0 0.004. It had a head and then it dropped down. So a back down. And then it, it settled in at just basically 0 0.04. From that point, which happened on the 12th, it broke to the upside. And it kept continuing to climb from basically 9 o'clock on the 12th, 9, 10 o'clock on the 12th, uh, which was Thursday. It kept continuing to climb up, if you will all the way to yesterday around seven o'clock and then it started to descend downward and i and i think the significance of this if we focus closer on the i think it was the five minute chart no it wasn't five minutes let's go 15. you can see i think a good clear directions of a head and shoulder scenario here at the top you know, yesterday at around uh, 145, it started to ascend upward too. And it was pretty parabolic when it went up from 0 0.0073 all the way up to 0 0.082. Then it went horizontal for a little while from basically about four o'clock to about 6.30. It shot up again and then quickly came right back down. This, this maybe not the perfect head and shoulders, but it sure looks very, very close to it. Then at about 11, 11 o'clock, it started to descend down to this range to where it's hovering right now. And I think what we're looking at is another a larger head and shoulders, because this would be the head component here. Here would be the left shoulder. And now the right is in formulation. This side of, you will, the head and shoulders, it started basically at 1130 on the 14th and went all the way to basically 145, not, not 11th or on the 14th, that would be on the 13th, um, to about two o'clock, a little less than that, 130. So this was almost a 12 hour period of time. So I think this will probably develop about the same. It started, if you will, at about 645 this morning. So it'll probably finish about six o'clock California time today. And it's either gonna break down or it's gonna break up. Not really sure which way it'll go at this point in time. <laughs> but it's definitely taken a breather. I think the significance of this is the increase. I mean, if we go back to the hourly chart, I mean, you're looking at a price that basically was about 3X in nature from this point to this point in, in just four days. Now, DIN has a long way to go. I'm gonna step back for a second and we're gonna take a little bit quick look at the four hour. And we can see the kind of the parabolic rise with just a two with two areas where it's kind of receded just for a brief second. So it could break to the upside and continue going up parabolic. And the reason why I say that is because, let me switch this. When you go to the day chart, you can clearly see where Dent has to go. In April, back when we had a very strong run up, when Bitcoin reached its, you know, sixty-two, sixty-one $61,000 level, you know, Dent went all the way up to two cents. It wicked up a little bit over two cents, and then it came just crashing down like everything else did and kind of went sideways here for a little while. So it's on the way back up. And if you look at these daily wicks, I mean, you can see that it's very, very parabolic. Here it, here it is. It's really trying to push up to one cents. And I, my gut is it's going to go up to at least a penny. 
Uh, there's a lot of activity at this level. They're probably going to find a lot of resistance at one cent. Um, but, and it's going to have to probably squeeze past basically 0 0.09 to probably just over a penny, probably zero, uh, a, a penny uh, 0.1 cents, if you will. Um, and then once it squeezes past that, then it's going to make a strong run up to two cents. Dent at the peak was as high as 11.1 .1 cents. So I think that's where it's shooting to get back to. There's been a lot of, com I've read a lot of com different comments on its ability to get to that level. I'll do a price prediction at another time. But I wanted to make people aware of just what Dent has done. Uh, for those that may have jumped in when it was down here at less than a third of a penny is obviously doing very well right now. And so for those of you that are interested in, in dealing in investing in a project that I think has great potential in the long term, that really has a unique niche that no one else is competing on right now, Dent is the person that is the project to take a look at. So I hope that helped. Again, this is Sunday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be making a couple more videos probably later on tonight. I look forward to seeing you in those videos. And again, this is Crypto Novus. I'm the host, Chris Brown. And remember, Crypto Novus is where newbies become masters. See you in the next video.